another week and another deflating loss by the Miami Dolphins. It took some time to process this one, mainly because the first two losses came against very good football teams. Losing the Buffalo Bills and the Las Vegas Raiders in overtime isn't a loss that makes you truly worry about this football team. However, a loss to the winless Indianapolis Colts is concerning. Add in the fact that the Colts were really banged up and missing some key players, and you can see why this loss hurts the most in 2021. The Miami Dolphins are in trouble. Colts quarterback Carson Wentz was far from 100% in the game, yet Wentz routinely found the open man and led his team to their first victory of the season. Miami was able to get pressure on Wentz, but they did not get enough to change the game. A big reason for this was because the defense couldn't stop the run. By not being able to stop the run, they couldn't focus on trying to get to Wentz. Second-year running back Jonathan Taylor had a big game, rushing for 103 yards and a score. It felt like if Taylor needed three, he picked up six. Miami offense was awful in the game. They have no identity, and with starting quarterback Tua Tungavailoa on injured reserve, they have no leader. Backup quarterback Jacoby Brissett has tried his best, but he is not a starting quarterback in the NFL. There was a lot to unpack from this frustrating loss, but here are three major takeaways from the Miami Dolphins' Week 4 game against the Indianapolis Colts. 3. Austin Jackson is bad at left tackle. Listen, it's over. Let's all stop trying to make chicken salad out of chicken crap. Austin Jackson is the worst starting left tackle in the NFL, and it's not even close. It's actually scary how far in the lead Jackson is for the worst starting left tackle in the NFL. Miami needs to accept it and move on from him playing left tackle. Keywords there. Left tackle. Some fans will hate this idea, but I personally love it, and we are also at the point of, why the heck not? I think Miami needs to bench Jackson at left tackle but start him at left guard. There are reps in the run game where Jackson flashes his first round talent. Jackson struggles most on an island in pass protection. Maybe the move to left guard will help him in pass pro and let him become a mauler in the run game. Could it fail? Absolutely, but it can't be worse than what he's doing at left tackle. Miami needs to at least try to get something out of him, especially because they took him in the first round. If he can become a starting guard in the NFL, it will not be a total failure of a pick. 2. Target Jalen Waddell, Mike Jasicki, and Devontae Parker, and only these three. This may seem like an obvious statement, but the Miami Dolphins two or is it three offensive coordinators clearly don't get it. Albert Wilson should not be on the field for another snap in Miami. Wilson may have had fun in training camp scoring touchdowns in shorts, but he is atrocious. The Dolphins finally traded Jakeem Grant, and they should try to trade Wilson too. Miami should heavily target Jalen Waddell, Mike Jasicki, and Devontae Parker. No other pass catcher should be stealing targets from these three guys. These three pass catchers should never come off the field either. The only other players who should get a few targets are Miles Gaskin and Salvan Ahmed. However, Miami should not rely on their running backs out of the backfield and should focus on pushing the ball down the field to their weapons. If Miami focuses more on getting their three best pass catchers the ball, maybe their passing offense won't look so bad. Waddle, Parker, and Jasicki have all shown that they are more than capable of making plays this season, so Miami needs to let them make plays. I did not add Will Fuller here because he can't be trusted anymore with his injury issues, so you need to rely heavily on the guys you have. 1. Get an alpha to take control of the offense right away. Brian Flores fun little, we aren't letting you know who is calling the plays, act would be cool if it weren't for the fact that whoever is calling the plays stinks. But if Flores wants to protect someone from criticism, that's fine, but it's Flores who needs to be held accountable then. And it's Flores who hired the two offensive coordinators, both of which were in-house candidates as there were many more qualified outside people to hire. It seems Flores' alpha personality clouds his judgment on hiring the right offensive coordinator. I believe the biggest issue is that Flores has not hired anyone that wants to be the alpha on the offensive side of the ball. Miami needs someone to speak up and be the voice of the offense. They don't need three beta offensive minds, they need one alpha mind. It seems like a nice time for all three of Miami offensive minds to hold the pillow as they talk about their feelings for the offense, but it's time for the games to end and someone to take control of this offense.